I'm Spider-Man. Hey, it's me, Tunatic. I just wanted to hop in real quick. Thank you guys for my channel hitting the milestone of 1k subscribers. This really means the world to me. Thank you so much. Alright, on to the video. Quick reminder that this review will be spoiler free. I hope you enjoy. So, I saw Spider-Verse this weekend with my friends and let me tell you, this movie, man! Spider-Verse has gotten stellar reviews from critics and this movie deserves all the praise it gets. So, let me just throw my two cents into the mix. The usage of colors in this movie is simply stunning. Many complementary contrasts are used in this film, and they are implemented fantastically to depict various characters' emotions. Let me give you an example. One specific instance sticks out to me especially. Gwen is confronted by her cop dad, whose design really reminds me of Mr. Incredible. He is depicted in reds, while Gwen is going through some inner turmoil and isolating herself, this being reflected in her color palette being blue. Also, the framing in this scene shows the emotional distance between these two characters at that moment. They do kinda talk it out in this scene, and when Gwen goes to embrace her dad, she adopts his warmer colors, and the whole background turns light as well. But during the conversation, things go south again, and she's once more cast in blues. Matter of fact, the whole room turns blue, and the space behind her turns the darkest. She's now being framed by her door, about to step into the metaphorical void, demonstrating her decision to choose isolation and loneliness. This is only one example of the extraordinary color usage in Spider-Verse. As a character's emotions change, so does the environment around them. The movie's director, Justin K. Thompson, also said in an interview that the 1950 Disney movie Cinderella served as a significant inspiration for how colors are used in Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. Quote, As a kid, I remember seeing the scene when Cinderella's dress is being torn apart by the evil stepsisters, and the background and the environment starts reacting to this emotional trauma that she's going through. The first Spider-Verse movie came out in 2018 and shook up the animation industry. Thanks to this movie and its success, studios experiment with their visual style a lot more nowadays. The sequel somehow managed to accomplish the same and so much more. If I were to talk about every way Spider-Verse pushes the boundaries of cinema, I'd be here all night. But one thing I can say without spoiling the ending is, I do love the direction this movie's storytelling is taking, and what this could mean for future animated films and franchises. Taking a very MCU kind of approach. The whole audience letting out a combined WHAT in disbelief at that ending. After watching the film, I had some mixed feelings about how it ended, but after giving it some time, I'm now very excited about what this could mean for animated movies and their story structure, as well as where animation is headed towards in the next couple of years. Spider-Verse shows an aspiration of what the US animation scene could be like if only studios were a little braver, less risk-averse, and willing to invest and trust in creators. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. But if a box office success of Spider-Verse opening weekend is any indication, it looks like the risk really paid off. Watching this movie actually hurts my brain because I can't figure out how the frick they even did half of this. Like, how did they make it look so good? Fortunately, many of the people working on the film were kind enough to shed some light on how they managed to achieve a few of the feats in the movie. Like, for example, how they made Spider-Punk's movements look like magazine cutouts even when moving. Quote, These were the rules for Hobie. Body on freeze, offset the vest, also on freeze but delayed by a frame or two, guitar on fours, outline on twos, only when he's moving should remain static when he's held still. Cut out around the guitar. Of course, we broke these rules when needed. The movie plays at 24 frames per second, and most characters are on twos, meaning they have a new pose every second frame. Hobie is on freeze, meaning he has a new pose every third frame, which is why he looks a little choppier than the others. Now I found this article about the inspirations that went into Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Compared to the first film, where the task was to create unique looking characters traveling to a single universe, this movie had entire worlds created, each with their own unique look and aesthetic. To quote one of the movie's directors, Justin K. Thompson, it's almost like we're jumping from one book to another. The goal was to take people on a journey and have a celebration of all these different amazing artists. They even hired people who had previously worked on different Spider-Man projects, including Rick Leonardi, the designer of the Spider-Man 2099 comic, and Brian Stelfreeze, a longtime artist for Marvel Comics, who helped develop the movie's version of Jessica Drew, aka Spider-Woman, for example. 
Another insane fact that blew my mind is this. So you know how there was this one scene in the movie where we are shown a Lego universe and a Lego version of Peter Parker? While this scene was short, it was pretty funny and also looked as good as any of the other universes in this movie. Now you might think that this scene was made by the people who worked on the Lego movies. Well, turns out that the whole sequence was created by a 14 year old kid. Preston Mutanga went viral for recreating famous moments in cinema with Lego. Like for example recreating the Spider-Verse trailers with Lego and even being retweeted by the official Spider-Verse Twitter account. Again, and I can't emphasize this enough, this kid made it into the credits of Spider-Verse at only 14 years old. Truly an incredible accomplishment. And I can't wait to see what he will be able to create in a couple of years time with even more experience under his belt. To create the translucent look of spider bite, the crew delved into technology that is nearly capable of creating three-dimensional holograms in real time. Like what? I don't even know what that means! <laughs> Quote, we aren't just putting her on screen and then putting her at a slight opacity. There are specific techniques that we delve deep into to give her a sense of presence on screen that feels like she's beyond just somebody wearing a suit. And those are just a few of the astounding breakthroughs in technology that were utilized in this movie. Now I have to admit that even after reading about how some of the effects in this film were created, I still can't fully grasp how they made things look this cool without performing some kind of ritualistic sacrifice. Witchcraft. One could argue that compared to the last couple of decades, CG animated movies have tried to be as realistic as possible style and or detail wise. While 3D animated movies have advanced from infancy uncanny valley territory all the way to hyperrealism in the past 30ish years, films have been experimenting with their style a lot more for some time now. And we have Spider-Verse largely to thank for that. Now studios actually are encouraged to stylize their movies a lot more and squeeze as much as possible out of their visuals to emphasize a film's plot, characters and overall mood of any scene depicted. One of my friends we saw the movie with pointed out that this evolution is kind of like how art evolved over time. From renaissance art in the 15th to 17th century, to the experimental style of art nouveau in the late 1800s to early 1900s, or expressionism after that. Art went from trying to depict something as realistic as possible to abstracting shapes and overall conveying more of an emotion, rather than capturing an exact replica. Now while this evolution took hundreds of years in art, CG movies did the same in a few decades. And this is truly a very exciting time for animation if you ask me. I can't wait to see where the medium is headed towards in the future. The sequel also manages to make the first movie even better if you were to go back and rewatch it. Like for example, the glitching spider that bit Miles initially makes so much more sense now. And how plot points from the first movie that at first glance seem insignificant or completed get picked up again while still feeling like a natural progression to the corresponding characters. It's just amazing. One of the many antagonists in this movie also has a fantastic arc, going from non-threatening goofball to berserk menace and threat to the whole existence of every universe. It's just so cool to see. And because we spent so much time with him in the beginning of the movie, he becomes very relatable and real to the audience. Also, his motivation makes so much sense and his reasoning for hating Miles is very understandable. Also, when he becomes more powerful, the style goes very top 10 anime rage moments-ish with its sharp, sketchy black and white lines. Good stuff right there. The last thing I want to talk about is that there is this theory floating around that Gwen could be trans. This coming from a scene from the trailer where you can see a protect trans kid's flag hanging in a room, as well as her dad wearing a trans pride badge pinned to his uniform. In addition, every universe depicted in this movie has a unique animation style and the color palette used for Gwen's world is drenched in pastel blue, pink and white colors. Furthermore, her story arc and character are very similar to the struggles of many real life trans kids. Now whether or not she really is trans or just an ally, it's still a really cool headcanon to have and it sure was a welcome surprise seeing the trans flag on the big screen. Definitely a step in the right direction. Also, I have to go off script and add, Miguel O'Hara has Dilf energy and he's really hot. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Just had to get that off my chest. And these are my thoughts on Spider-Verse, only one of the four animated movies I am planning on reviewing this month. Congrats on making it all the way through my fangirly ramblings. What are your thoughts on the film? Do you have anything to add? Feel free to let me know if you agree or disagree with my opinions, or if there's anything else you'd like to share about Spider-Verse. 
And don't forget to like and subscribe by whip shooting the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Pew pew. <laughs> bye bye.